The time is 5 a.m. and this is WKYT This Morning. The investigation into the attack on Dallas police officers continues this morning. We'll have the latest updated investigation coming up. And here in Kentucky, the search continues for a northern Kentucky couple not been seen in a week. Police say they were murdered. We'll have the latest on the investigation into this coming up. And Lexington firefighter Matt Logsdon will be laid to rest today. We'll have details on his service. That's ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome to you on this Monday. I'm Rebecca Smith. And I'm Bill Bryan. And we hope you had a nice weekend. It certainly was beautiful weather to enjoy out you there. Know, you know, it was great if you happened to get out and get some of that vitamin D from <laughs> that fabulous ah, sunshine. Great. And hopefully, Michael will have more of that. Word is it continues today. So let's check in with him. Yeah. You know, that's going to be the case. We will see nice temperatures, humidity still pretty much down. And not only that, but we're staying mainly dry now. As we track off into your work week, that's going to be a different story, unfortunately. Nothing going on right now uh, outside. We're at 63 degrees right now in Boyle County, and that goes for Richmond, too, in Madison County. Today's forecast, we'll get into the afternoon. We cannot rule out a couple of stray southern storms. That's what we have to watch out for in the southern portion of our viewing area at 87 degrees for virtually everybody. And the humidity and the rain chances will be on the increase after today. So Tuesday through your Friday, they don't look that great. And I'm going to show you that the good news and the bad news that comes with that in just a few minutes. All right, a little bit of a trade off, it sounds like, in our weather coming up. And let's get to the news. Parts of downtown Dallas still closed this morning. This, of course, as the investigation continues into last week's sniper attack. And police are saying the gunman may have had bigger plans. Yesterday, the Dallas police chief said the gunman used his own blood to write the letters RB on the wall in the building where he was killed. The police chief also defended the department's decision to use a robot bomb to kill the shooter. Without our actions, he would have. Hurt more officers to, uh, so we we had no choice in my mind but to use all tools necessary. And while the investigation is ongoing, protests over police violence have continued across the country. Yesterday in Memphis, protesters shut down both directions of Interstate 40 for hours, and hundreds were arrested in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where last week a black man was killed at the hands of police. President Obama will be speaking at a memorial service tomorrow for the five fallen police officers in Dallas. The president cut short his trip to Europe. Obama will be joined by his predecessor, former Former President George W. Bush, who will also speak. President Obama will also meet with the fallen officers' families. The president strongly condemned people who attacked police while in Spain yesterday. He said those offenders are doing a disservice to criminal justice reform. Well, the search continues for a missing northern Kentucky couple. Police say they were murdered. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner have been missing for more than a week. They were last seen in Washington County, where the man accused of killing them is expected to face a judge today. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk with the latest on that. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. State police say they've found the killer and they found the missing couple's car abandoned in a field, but they just cannot find their bodies. The search for the couple is now going on day eight and there is still no trace of them. 50 people showed up yesterday in Woodford County to start looking for Robert Jones and Crystal Warner. Jones's ex-wife organized the search, but then she called it off. She told the crowd there was just too much ground to cover and not enough information for them to work off. Jones and Warner vanished last Sunday. They were last seen leaving a rental property in Washington County. Craig Pennington, the man who we're told rented the home from them, is charged with murdering the couple. Jones had three children. Um, I've only had the privilege of meeting Bobby a couple times. He's real personable, uh, really friendly, outgoing. I'm more doing this for his sons, um, just the, the grief they must feel and needing to start some kind of closure. Um, pondered that quite a bit. The 52 year old who is accused of shooting Jones and Warner is expected to make his first court appearance in this case early this afternoon. From the live desk, Mark Barber. WKYT. Firefighters in Lexington are trying to figure out what started a fire that damaged a home. A viewer sent us some video of a house on Fontaine Road. Firefighters say when they got there about 8 o'clock, the back deck was on fire. Look at that. People say the house and the smoke from it filled the air. We know the people that live next door, so we want to stop by and make sure everyone was okay, if it was their house, if it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, but when we pulled up, the 
whole house was in flames. All of it engulfed in flames. Uh, we wanted to make sure everyone was okay. Everyone was okay. Good news here. Firefighters said no one was hurt. They're still trying to figure out, though, if the fire was suspicious or accidental. In Rockcastle County, firefighters trying to figure out what sparked car fires. Mount Vernon firefighters say flames damaged a car in an ATV that was parked outside a home yesterday morning. No one was injured in this. Fellow first responders will say goodbye to a Lexington firefighter today. Matt Logsdon passed away last week after a battle with cancer. His funeral is today at 1 o'clock at Northeast Christian Church in Louisville. Dozens of people and other first responders stopped by his visitation yesterday afternoon in Louisville. Lexington Fire Captain Chris Bartley paid his respects to a man he watched battle cancer on the front lines. He was a heck of a fighter and uh, just, uh, you know, fell short there, and, uh, but he gave it his all and uh, made everybody proud. Logsdon served as a firefighter for 10 years. He also helped to get Senate Bill 195 passed into law. It gives line of duty death benefits for firefighters who are diagnosed with certain types of cancer. Our time this morning is 5.06 on WKYT. After a string of drownings, first responders in Harrison County are planning to hold a public forum to warn community members of the dangers related to swimming near dams. The county search and rescue team says the Robinson Dam is a hot spot for swimmers, despite being a place where numerous people have drowned. Twenty people have drowned there alone since the 1970s. The latest came last month when a man's body was recovered when he drowned after jumping off of the dam. Rescue officials Officials now hope a forum will be the first step toward stopping the drownings. That forum will begin tonight at 6.30. State police are searching for an inmate who escaped from a jail in western Kentucky. They say Capus Kane Adams jumped over a fence at the Graves County Restricted Custody Center Friday. He was serving a sentence for theft. Adams is six feet tall, is bald, and has brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a gray t-shirt and red and white striped jail pants. Adams is from Hopkins County. 43 horses involved in an animal cruelty case on a Mercer County farm are slowly improving. We checked up on them over the weekend. A team of volunteers and veterinarians working around the clock to help them. They say the horses are starting to gain weight. Investigators charged Chuck Burrell with 43 counts of second degree animal cruelty. His daughter, a famous trainer, Maria Burrell, is wanted on the same charges. She trained the horse that actually won the Breeders' Cup Sprint Cup last year. If this case is not pursued and we lose it for some reason and the pressure's not kept on the county attorney, she will have every right legally to take these horses back. The horses' caregivers think it will likely take more than a year for the horses to make a full recovery. They think it'll be another six months before the case goes to trial. Lawmakers from all across the South are in Lexington this week. They're in town for the Southern Legislative Conference. But instead of talking politics over the weekend, they took time out on Sunday to serve those in need. Attendees met at Heritage Hall and they packed meals for God's Pantry Food Bank. It's 15 southern states that have an agreement to meet each and every year in respective host states, whichever it may be. Not a better way to kick off the actual uh, conference than to uh, give back to the community. Their goal was to pack 80,000 meals. The conference wraps up in a couple of days after they discuss policy and politics in the south. Next year it will be in Biloxi, Mississippi. A handful of cyclists took advantage of the nice weather weekend. About a dozen men and women riding cross country. They stopped in Lexington yesterday afternoon. They started their journey in Seattle and will end in Virginia Beach. The cyclists are riding to raise $100,000 for Alzheimer's research. A lot of us have been personally affected by Alzheimer's and others have seen the effects of Alzheimer's for the patients and the caregivers of the families. And so we just feel pretty responsible and uh, pretty able to make a, make a difference in people's lives that are affected by the disease. The cyclists spent the night in Lexington. There is an event for them this morning at North Lime Donuts on North Limestone from 7.30 until 10.30. All right, so they'll uh, carve up a little bit there before they, yeah. <laughs> before they it, head it's out. It's a good thing. <laughs> what a journey for a great cause. WKYT this morning just getting started here on your Monday. Sad news, if you're a fan of Honda, the automaker discontinuing one of its hybrid models. We'll tell you why they made the decision coming up. Pretty calm and quiet right now, but I will tell you this. We're going to be looking at a chance, a small chance, but a chance at a couple of showers, a couple of rumbles of thunder in the forecast. We're going to get into that coming up next. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. 
So it's a pretty good looking start to the day. There's really not much going on outside as you're walking out the door. It's one of those mornings again. Low humidity, looks fine, feels fine. We'll take it. First alert defender live radar. And this will change later on this afternoon because we will have a small chance of rain in the forecast. We're going to be looking at the 60s outside, 63 now in Danville, just turning 63 in Somerset and Pulaski County. And that goes for Richmond and also Berea. Work your way into Waco. Those areas look pretty good this morning. Moorhead coming in at 68, mid 60s there in Lexington. So much of your morning, I don't see any problems whatsoever. But once you hit the afternoon, it's a little bit of a different story. There's not a great chance of rain in the forecast, but there is a chance, especially for southern half. That is your better opportunity. Temperatures at 87 degrees later on this afternoon, and we head off into the evening hours and still holding on to still at least that chance of rain. So here's the breakdown for the rain chances. 10%, we just can't rule it out all the way to the 64 corridor, but really it's the Cumberland Parkway, Howe Rogers Parkway. Those are your best opportunities to see some rain, but look at what the rain percentage is there, 30%. So it's really not a great chance of rain. I just can't rule out a stray thunderstorm, stray shower as we pass on by through that 1 to about 8 p.m. time frame. So let's break down what we're going to be expecting the rest of the week. It's a decent start to the work week. It's not all that bad except for that chance of rain down south. Now humidity will start to be on the increase too as we work our way through the forecast. And the daily threat at rain chances will be with us each and every day from Tuesday through Friday. Those are your better opportunities of rain. The good news here is it moves out for the weekend. So there's some fantastic news. The problem is when is this front going to make its way through? So the front looks like it's going to make its way through either Thursday or Friday. Right now I'm leaning more toward Thursday than Friday. Uh, but these, these weather models don't have a good agreement on if it pushes through on Thursday or Friday. Some of them say Thursday, some of them say Friday. So you just got to, we still have time to see where we're going to be seeing uh, that front push through. But I will tell you this, all of them are agreeing that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at least a 40% chance of rain, at the least. But the good news is, is it doesn't look like that setup like we've had the past few weeks, where we've had one powerful system after another. Just looks like your daily threat at rain chances, kind of that summertime af afternoon activity uh, that we're going to be seeing there and toward the next few days. Today's not all that bad, though. Yeah, we'll it's take it. It'll be good, we'll and uh, we'll uh, enjoy the continued sunshine. There right? you go. Good deal. Yes. Thank you. 515 right now. It's not your run-of-the-mill eating championship. Competitors <laughs> gathered in Buffalo, New York, for the world's healthiest eating championship. All right. <laughs> <laughs> The competition was called, get this, kale, yeah. 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 Participants had to eat as much kale salad as they could in eight minutes. Oh, this one is for Bill Bryan all the way. Professional eater Gideo OG ate 25 and a half bowls of salad and was crowned champion of the inaugural Kale Cup, winning the top prize of $2,000. <laughs> Organizers say kale was chosen because it is one of the most nutritious vegetables. A superfood. <laughs> <laughs> they got plenty of it, didn't they? <laughs> you know, if it's the kale salad from. Um, where is it? I had it from Joella's the other day. Yeah. Oh, it was delicious. But it does have fried chicken in it, so that oh. probably helps. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that probably That is a good kale salad. <laughs> Enhanced it a little <laughs> bit. Good to have you with us here on WKYT this morning. We have a lot coming up for you, including a look at your money. Mortgage rates near a new record, and Honda discontinues a car. I'm Brooke Silva Braggett in New York. Those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Hey there, welcome back in to WKYT This Morning. We're glad you're with us on this Monday. Mortgage rates are near an all-time low. Plus, there's good news for basketball fans. And there may be a new way for you to watch your team. That's what we like to hear in Wildcat Country, of course. Brooke Silverbraga has the latest on your money. A much better than expected jobs report sent stocks higher Friday. The Dow added 250 points and the NASDAQ was up 79. Mortgage rates are nearing an all-time low. The average 30-year fixed rate mortgage is now at 3.41 percent. That's down from just over 4 percent a year ago and just one-tenth of a point off the record, which was set back in 2012. A 15-year fixed rate mortgage now averages 2.74 percent. It was 3.2 this time last year. Basketball fans may get a new way to watch their favorite team. Twitter is working to expand its sports coverage. They already have rights to stream some NFL games starting next season. In addition to the NBA, Twitter is reportedly in talks with Major League Soccer. 
And Honda is discontinuing its CRZ hybrid after the two seater sold just 1,200 units in the first half of the year. Low gas prices have hurt demand for hybrid cars, but the CRZ also faced criticism that it wasn't as sporty as promised or as fuel efficient as competitors. And that's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Brooke Silva Bragg. Well, Amazon shoppers, you may be tempted to go on a buying spree tomorrow. That's when the company is holding what it is calling the biggest global Amazon event ever. Amazon says it will offer more than 100,000 special deals on its second annual Prime Day. New deals will be rolling out throughout the day, sometimes as often as every five minutes. They'll be available only to Amazon Prime members, but anyone can sign up for a free 30-day trial membership and shop tomorrow. All right. Another daily distraction for you there oh, tomorrow. Man. Maybe some good deals, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe. 521, Monday morning on WKYT, and we have a lot more news coming up. Our top stories in just a few minutes. Sports is up next as well. Andrew Harrison has a new NBA contract, and the SEC Media Days kick off in Hoover today. That's next in sports. Looks pretty good outside early this morning. I'm not seeing any problems whatsoever as you're traveling. If you're one of those that likes to walk or run early in the morning, no issues. Humidity is still down, and it looks like that's going to stay that way for most today. Temperatures are in the mid-60s early this morning. 65 degrees right now in the capital city. So we go through the morning. It's pretty nice. By the afternoon, we do have that chance of rain. It's about 30%, but it's mainly for the southern half. Cumberland Parkway, Howe Rogers Parkway, that is your best bet for the day. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Andrew Harrison's hard work has paid off, and now he's about to get paid. The former Kentucky point guard signed a new three-year, $3 million deal with the Memphis Grizzlies on Sunday. Andrew was a second-round draft pick by Memphis in 2015. He spent all of last season playing for the Grizzlies' D-League team, the Iowa Energy, where he averaged 18 points per game. Yahoo Sports is reporting the first two years of the contract are guaranteed with a partial guarantee on the third season. Well, John Calipari took to Twitter upon hearing the news of Andrew's new contract, tweeting, so happy for Andrew Rock, that's Andrew. He's worked so hard to earn his new deal with the Grizzlies. He'll be in the league for a long time. NBA Summer League on Sunday. Kings taking on the Rockets. Second pro game for Scal Abissier. He gets the floater to drop in the lane. We've seen that a time or two. Scal played just 22 minutes, had four points, five rebounds. This is his only other bucket in the second quarter, spinning and scoring in the paint. Then the final seconds of the half, Willie Colley Stein drives in, uses the glass. Kings had a three point lead at the intermission. Go to the second half, another former Wildcat, Kyle Wilcher, playing for the Rockets Summer League team, banks it in from the elbow. He had 11 points, more from Colley Stein. You know, he's really been working on his offensive game. He finished with 11 points and six boards. Rockets get the win, 85 to 73. Well, each year, the SEC Media Days serve as the unofficial kickoff to the college football season. And over the next four days, SEC coaches and players will be taking turns in front of hot mics in Hoover, Alabama. Mark Stoops and the Wildcats will take their turn on Wednesday afternoon. Stoops, along with running back JoJo Kemp, linebacker Courtney Love, and offensive lineman John Toth will represent Kentucky. Our own Dick Gabriel will be there with reports each night from Hoover. We will look forward to hearing from him and seeing what the Wildcats have to say about the upcoming season on Wednesday. That's a look at your morning sports. Have a great Monday.